You may remember the catastrophic forest fires in Indonesia last year, and already there are signs that this year could bring more of the same. The fires have had a devastating impact on the orangutans that live in the rainforest there. These rare apes are so like us, and their struggle to survive is so human, that it's hard not to be moved by their plight. And tonight, in conjunction with the cable network Animal Planet, 2020 takes you to the jungles of Borneo for an exclusive look at the desperate race to save the orangutans. In March of 1998, massive forest fires devoured 1,900 square miles of Borneo's rainforest. That's an area larger than the states of Vermont and New Hampshire combined. Sparked by a severe drought, or sometimes deliberately set to clear land, the fires killed at least 1,000 orangutans, the rare apes, which are one of the closest relatives to human beings. Sharing 97% of our genetic makeup, orangutans are among the most intelligent of all living creatures. They make use of tools and rear their children for as long as nine years. Their strongest bond is between mother and child. Once native to all of Southeast Asia and parts of Southern China, the orangutan now survives only on the Indonesian islands of Sumatra and Borneo. But even here, the fires aren't the only threat to their survival. Decades of logging have slashed through the rainforest, robbing the species of most of its last remaining home. The orangutan population has dropped from an estimated 25,000 in 1990 to less than 15,000 today. <laughs> Fighting to save this species from extinction is the Warner Reset Orangutan Center, located in the southeast corner of Borneo. Founder of the center, Dr. Willie Smits, and his staff relocate orangutans from the endangered sections of the rainforest to the safety of Borneo's few remaining nature preserves. Every day, our teams are out there rescuing orangutans. Some of them, like this little one here, see, he has still burning wounds here on his arm and on his leg, from which he's still recovering. On this day, Dr. Smits and his rescue team set out for villages so remote, the only way to get there is by boat. They're looking for several young captive orangutans who are orphans because their mothers have been killed and eaten for food. The babies are often sold illegally to help the local villagers survive. Yes, they know there is an orangutan here, and uh, we're going to try to find it now. Arriving unannounced, Willie finds the first captive easily. A little male. Two and a half year old. He's full with parasites. You can see from his eyes. He's friendly. We can just take him like that. It's okay. So let's do the legal process. While the laws prohibit holding illegally captured orangutans, offenders are rarely prosecuted as long as they surrender the animal. Okay, we're going further upriver. Instead of returning to the center, Dr. Smiths will travel through the night to another village where there's been a report of more captured babies. Next morning, he finds a two-year-old male in very bad shape. So this one is extremely skinny. Okay. And he's totally dehydrated, has no strength left. He could die any time now. Since 1993, the Warner Reset staff has confiscated nearly 600 baby orangutans who were destined to be sold as pets on the black market. Here, staff members care for these young ones, serving as surrogate mothers and teaching them jungle survival skills. Some of the young orangutans will remain here up to four years. Then they will be released into one of the few protected areas of the rainforest. But back in the medical clinic, the two-year-old male is fighting for his life. Dr. Smits has named him Berani, or Brave One, because of his will to live. It's really doubtful if he is going to make it, but we're going to try to give him an intravenous trip. It's the only hope for him. It's very tricky to get a fine vein like that. If we do not help him, then, then he might not make it through the night. Saving orphan babies is only part of Dr. Smith's job. Next morning, his rescue team will search for adult orangutans trapped in parts of the rainforest being cut down by logging companies. Much of this land's diversity will never recover. Desperate for money, the Indonesian government has allowed foreign timber companies to cut down 80% of the jungle. Preserving these ancient trees has become a very low priority. It's a true disaster what has happened here. 
It's a matter of weeks. All of this will be flat. And this one has only one tree left, and he will die. If we don't get it, it has no hope. The challenge is to hit this large male, which they found hiding high in the treetops, with a tranquilizer dart, and then catch it as it falls through the branches. Uh, yeah. yes. While this may look brutal, it's the only way to save these wild orangutans from certain death. Without food or the cover of trees, there is no way they could survive. Seven years old. It's okay. Then the team spots another adult in the distance, looking especially weak. Looks like a 30 kilograms heavy female, just coming into reproductive age. All that's left for this orangutan to eat are the scraps of bark she has pulled off the trees around her. The lack of protein has drained her strength. Yeah. Okay, perfect shot. <laughs> Well, the, the water has broken her fall in the plant, but she's all right. Sure, Look how skinny she is. Yeah. Yeah. If we don't get her out of here, she's finished. She's very, very weak. Yeah. Imagine that little bit of tranquilizer. She just immediately knocked her out. A little further into the logging area, trapped in a shrinking pocket of rainforest, the rescuers find a mother and baby high up in the trees. But they present an especially difficult target. The problem is that the baby is supposed to be clinging on the belly. Huh? We cannot shoot the belly and we cannot shoot the baby. If we hit the baby with this big dose, the baby will die. If we hit the belly deep, the mother will die. The baby knows it's wrong with the mother. The baby is afraid now. With its mother hit, the baby separates and crawls away. Look at this belly. It's just skin and bones, poor thing. The baby is now on its own, and Dr. Smits is left with an agonizing situation. He has run out of tranquilizer darts, so there's no hope of getting the baby on this trip. A team will have to be sent back for the baby later, while its mother and the other adults captured today are taken out of the logging area by helicopter to one of the few protected areas of the unburned forest left in Borneo, the Meratus Reserve. The orangutans are less than 100 yards from freedom as their cages are placed near the edge of the preserve. This one's done. We have to open the cage with a gosh, rather upset orangutan. Let us stay behind me. You strong fellow. There he goes. How small he looks, eh? Next comes the single female who, just hours before, was so weak the tranquilizer nearly stopped her heart. She has gotten food and water. She's finished everything. She's fit enough to get in the trees, and there is so much fruit here. She'll be uh, up and running in no time. A close call for the cameraman. She's perfect shape. <laughs> As for the captured mother, Dr. Smits is keeping her caged in the hopes her baby will be captured soon and the two can then be released together into the haven of Maratus. Meanwhile, back at the Wanarisset Center, there is very good news about two-year-old Barani, who was in such desperate condition just a few days before. He is now taking food on his own, and he's even bonded with a female playmate, making his chances for a full recovery even better. A few days later, word comes through that the baby who had to be left in the logging area has finally been captured and is on its way to Maratus. For the mother, the reunion can't come soon enough. She has refused all food and water since they've been separated. Finally brought together after days of being apart, mother and child recognize each other instantly.
The bond between this mother and child and their journey to freedom underscores the tragedy of the thousands of young orangutans whose families have been killed. Dr. Willie Smits and his team hold out one of the only hopes that the orangutan will survive the devastation of the modern world, allowing them to remain in what's left of the pristine wilderness they've always known. Well, we're happy to tell you that the mother and her baby have been spotted several times in the past year, and they appear to have adapted well to their new home. For more information on the race to save the orangutans of Borneo, you can visit our website at abcnews.com. We'll be right back. When we come back, he endured unbelievable pain to unleash the music in his heart. And now, one of America's greatest pianists is back. Center stage in Cuba. Barbara Walters catches up with a man of passion and perseverance when 2020 continues. He's got pride in his heart and dirt on his hands. There's one place to find a hardworking man. Ford Country, look at that truck. Ford Country, built Ford Tough. Ford Country, when the work gets done. Ford Country, the whole world's Ford Country. Fidelity.com. Every second counts. Fidelity.com. Every second counts. System availability and response time may be subject to market conditions. Introducing Benacol. My doctor said I need to watch my cholesterol, but it's hard. Now there's new hope for millions of people concerned about their cholesterol. Benacol. It's a completely new kind of product used in place of butter or margarine. Studies show that Benacol actually helps promote healthy cholesterol levels. It really tastes good. And it's good for my cholesterol? I'd use it. Benacol isn't just low in cholesterol, it actually promotes healthy cholesterol levels. New Benacol, now available. I'm here for the boss. Do you mean the Eureka Boss with 10 amps? It's a great value. Whoa. Or Mega Boss with 12 powerful amps, the most you can get. Both have Micron filter and tools on board, soft bag or hard box. Thanks. Get your boss from Eureka. If you looked into your local carrier's phone lines, what time period would they place your company in? Why live in the past when local's future is right through here? On Net, where local, national, and global all flow over one network and by one company. Oh, and did I mention it'll save you money? On Net from MCI Worldcom. Somebody say McDonald's? 2020, now in its 20th anniversary year, winner of over 300 prestigious awards for excellence in broadcast journalism. And medical marijuana. I think it's obvious people become addicted. You know, there's a lot of potheads in the world. <laughs> Politically incorrect tonight. Washington, all that hot air from those politicians keeps things cooking. Hey, speaking of cooking, that Renny Nod is one hot sports guy on News 7. I didn't like this. <laughs> You're worth a billion dollars. You can have a good time with such women. Don't make the mistake of marrying one. Can you get away with murder? An ABC premiere movie event, Texas Justice, Monday. Literacy is a smart investment. We found that employees that can read and understand directions, charts, and graphs are better workers. That's why we started a workplace education program. As a CEO, I've made sure my company supports literacy. This helps build an educated workforce and a more informed consumer base. Simply put, supporting literacy is good business. For more information, call the National Institute for Literacy.
this spring, something extraordinary happened. An entire U.S. baseball team and dozens of American pop, jazz, and classical musicians were invited to Cuba to perform. The first of these so-called ambassadors had a very special reason for wanting to go to Cuba. He is a world-famous classical pianist who has had to overcome tremendous obstacles to play as exquisitely as he does. He is a friend of mine, but uh, you may also remember him. Last April, I brought you the remarkable story of Byron Janus, who stunned audiences 40 years ago to become one of America's greatest concert artists. In the midst of a brilliant career, he was struck by a crippling form of arthritis, which threatened to silence his hands forever. How many of your fingers were affected by the arthritis? All of them. All of them. And your wrists. And wrists. Eventually, it spread to all of them. Byron, how did you continue to perform? You willed yourself to perform. Passion and perseverance. That will to succeed, plus new medical treatment for his arthritis, enabled Byron Janus to begin recording and performing once again. Welcome to Cuba. Thank you very much. Just last March, he and his wife, Maria, traveled to Havana, Cuba, where Byron played two concerts after an absence of 42 years. It was an historic return for Byron, who had been the last...